Hey, what's up, YouTube? It's Jarrett here, aka Miso Honey, back in with another video. We are approximately probably like 36, 35, 36 hours away from the expansion launch happening and rotation taking effect. Uh, so we are here now with the theory crafted decks. Uh, I wanted to go a little bit of a different route this time around because there's some decks that are still in this meta that I think are going to actually be really good in the following meta just because they're not losing a lot of, of cards. Uh, cards like, you know, decks like Miracle Rogue and um, Pure Paladin and stuff like that are not losing a lot of, like, their core pieces. So I think they're going to actually carry over and be pretty solid in their that aspect. But I don't really want to talk about those decks too much. Uh, there's some decks here that, you know, whenever the class comes up, I'll, I'll mention them here. Uh, but... Let's get right into it here, because uh, Death Knight did not really get any changes to its... Because uh, it's not losing anything. It's not going to change as much as all of the other classes. Uh, and it's also only gaining a few cards. Like this this set, it gained quite a, like, quite a bit of uh, Unholy and Blood cards, and only one Frost. And the frost was kind of like very negligible, and so it's not going to change all that much. Uh, even like the cards, deck said it did gain, gain a little bit. Um, I think Blood Death Knight might have a more tempo based deck now, but we're gonna have to wait and see how that pans out. I tried making like a weird hand buff deck, and it seems like it's almost there. We're like like two blood gems and one unholy gem. But it doesn't seem to quite be uh, on par with the triple uh, triple gym decks quite yet. So this one's an unholy deck with Death Growl and Cage Head. Uh, Death Growl can copy Necrolite here. It can copy Foul Egg, which is uh, preferable probably uh, if you're desperate and you need to draw three cards for one mana. It, hey. Sometimes you just gotta copy the Baron. Um, but if you want to combo off two, it's Cage Head. So it's a flexible card. And then obviously Cage Head is an added finisher to the deck. Deck's not gonna change all that much. Obviously, it's probably gonna be able to still grind some wins for, for Death Knight for people that don't have Golden Death Knight yet. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Deck looks overall pretty solid here. Moving on to Demon Hunter. Outcast DH looks like it's going to be really good. It looked really good in theory crafting, uh, probably better than what was advertised, I would say. Uh, and I think like Halveria looked better than advertised in the theory crafting. I think this deck looks like it's pretty, you know, super fast. It does look like it could be susceptible to some control decks out there, uh, some decks that you know want to like to play like Defile. Uh, keep in mind that like Phantom Knives is back in Rogue and stuff like that, so it seems like really susceptible to a uh, one damage AOE removal with all their little rushers and stuff like that. Um, depending on which way this deck goes, this seems like it's a good starting point for the deck. Obviously, here with the four new cards in it, Rush the Stage, Halveria, Glavitar seems like it's insane. Security seems pretty good. And that's not including cards that haven't seen a whole lot of standard play, like Vengeful Walloper and Wretched Exile, which is good reload. Uh, not to mention, like like I said, Glavitar is just like insane reload. And the fact that we got back a card like Illidari Studies really helps solidify this deck and have the support that it desperately needed whenever the Outcast package was kind of introduced in March of the Lich King here. Uh, it's now going to have that. So this deck looks like a good starting point, and uh, this list is far from fledged out. None of these lists are going to be perfect. They're just kind of there for uh, day one uh, fun decks here to try to uh, just tamper with before the meta gets solved here. Uh, for Druid, Druid's in a rough spot. Uh, I'm going to say that. Druid seems like it might actually be the worst class Post rotation, it loses out on a lot of its wide removal. It can't really play its wide removal 
Um, we have the broomstick from the 4-mana 2-2 two -two that deals 2 damage at AoE. That seems meh, kind of meh to me. Um, it's a consecration on a 2-2 two -two body, yeah, but it's just not... It uh, doesn't seem like it's that impactful. So I decided to go uh, another route here, which is more the aggro-based version of the deck. Uh, sort of with like a, a undead package in there, which means that we have to play some cards that we don't really want to. It also means like Peaceful Piper is not guaranteed to get like Groovy Cat. It might draw like a mistake by accident. Um, but you kind of need the mistake in there for a turn one undead play. Uh, it might be possible that mistake needs to be replaced with like, um, oh, uh, Mermy, the... Murloc with Reborn, the 1-mana one 1-1 one one with um, Reborn. It's an undead minion, too, that can trigger Nerubian Flyer. We have some stick to the board here in, like, Soul of the Forest. We have some Reload, Spread the Word, and Crooked Cook. Uh, and we can rebuy our Groovy Cat with um, Unending Swarm, if need be. We also have Life from Death, which seems like it's pretty good Reload here, too. But the entire package for Druid, it might be there. It might be worth playing the one mana one two that upgrades the armor also. But I figured I wanted to go the more aggressive route too. That's why even like pounce is in here and stuff like that because I just want I want spread the word to be able to go off and just get some really fast reload uh, extremely quickly. And I didn't really want to top the curve too high here. Even our six mana cards just really for reload here. Uh, but overall, I'm not super impressed with this deck, but it, it might be able to get there. It seems like a, an okay uh, point to start out here with. Next up here is a Big Beast Hunter. Um, I think this deck's going to overperform. I think this deck's going to uh, actually exceed expectations. I think a lot of people were uh, sort of just overthought everything here. Uh, Hunter has plenty of early game that it can play that doesn't mess up the beast pool uh, for like big dreams and stuff like that. Um, so I don't have any doubts that it's going to have problems with that. Also, you have like Twin Bow Terror Coil where you can kind of double up on some of your big spells, uh, which is really nice. And also in this deck, I have Murkwater Scribe, which can allow you with even without the coin to play big dreams on turn four which is really nice it can also get you to like a turn six uh faithful companion as well if you're really desperate for that or you can just you know um if, if you have to terror coil wild spirits you terror coil wild spirits and that's gonna be that uh overall i think this deck it, like i said i think this deck's gonna overperform and uh people's expectations, and I think it's better than what people are, are giving it credit for. Um, but I don't think it's going to be like Tier 1 or anything like that. I think it's going to be a decent Tier 2 deck in the format here, and I have high hopes for that. I will say this. I also really think that like a Mech Hunter uh, variant is going to be like an aggressive deck that kind of has like Mech support is also going to be good. It got Dragon Bane back and stuff like that. It's got, you know, a bunch of magnetized things. You have Frequency Oscillator. You have Mistake for a one-drop. Um, the uh, buff to Bronze Gatekeeper is going to be much bigger than what people think. I, that's, I, I think Bronze Gatekeeper might be the most improved card of the expansion from the core set. Let's just put it that way. And we will move on to Mage here. Mage, you can go and you can go build Mech Mage. And you can probably build some type of like uh, of the Aggro Mage that's been going around. Uh, Aggro Mage is losing out on its like hero power and stuff like that. So I didn't really want to fall back on that. So I decided to go the Light Show route. Uh, during Theory Crafting, this deck looked extremely fun. Made some changes to it. Uh, wanted to add some cards into it to kind of... Uh, solidify the, the combo off, essentially, uh, and give you more options to combo off. So I put, like, Vexilis in there and stuff like that because it double-casts light shows and gets you, you know, uh, two counts on light show. So that's pretty good in and of itself. 
You have Savara in here to pick up uh, recasted either rewinds or light shows that can get you more light shows, obviously. And yeah, the overall, the deck looks uh, pretty fun and solid. And then you have Ron Math, uh, Ron Math here to kind of round out uh, the curve here to pretty much act as a, a finisher of sorts. I would say Ron Math in this deck kind of reminds me of Jace from like Demon Hunter in the Fell DH. Uh, so this deck looks extremely fun. Might be my mo my favorite deck that I that's in the theory craft, but we'll have to wait and see here. Next up here, we have Paladin, and Paladin is one of those classes that hasn't changed very much. Uh, Kangor seems like it's going to create a new archetype, but the Kangor, that deck really falls on Kangor itself. It is really heavy on like drawing the Kangor and stuff like that. And yeah, you can play a card like Mass Reveler to... Uh, kind of triple down on King Gore possibly and try to get to him uh, more consistently but it just feels like it's just a little bit too slow I did build a deck I will put the code down below for the King Gore Paladin um, but this deck seems like it's uh, a little bit better on paper at least yeah it's close to like pure Paladin and stuff like that but it's not completely pure paladin. Um, I don't think they're gonna fall back on like value-oriented stuff, especially in the beginning of the format. I don't think they need to. I think they need to be as aggressive as possible and push that damage and push for the board. We have six one drops that have divine shield, so if you do have spotlight, you should be guaranteed to get that two mana five five almost every game, if not every game. Um, so. You have that going for you. You obviously have Blood uh, Matriarch Liadrin here. You have some uh, synergies with her, with like um, Buffet Biggin, and you also have uh, Muster for Battle back in the core set, which seems extremely good. So I like this as a starting point. And that's not to mention Rowdy Fan. If you go Coin Rowdy Fan on like a one drop Divine Shield minion, and then turn three. Like, they kill your Divine Shield minion, and then you go, all right, well, I'll just seal blood my Rowdy fan, and all of a sudden I got a 4-8 Divine Shield that you got to deal with also. So it just seems like this deck has a lot of uh, hard scenarios for your opponent to deal with early on in the game, which is why I like this version a little bit better than the pure version for the time being. Next up here... We've got Priest, and Priest, I think, is going to be very underestimated also. I think Overheal, I think the mechanic has been overlooked here a little bit. Um, I think in the theory crafting, I think this deck looked uh, pretty good. Made a little bit of changes to the deck here, but I think this is close. I think the mechanic itself just needs a little bit more support. I think it's going to need like one more expansion of... Uh, like kind of fledging out to get there, but I think it's almost there, and I think this deck is actually better, uh, is also better than Advertise on paper. I think Heartthrob as a card is uh, one of the most important components to the deck, and I think people kind of just decided to wave him off because he's one of the earlier uh, spoilers in the season, and I think they were kind of like, like, meh. Uh, but now that we know how overheal works, and you don't even have to like flash heal them and get a five drop, uh, fan club get a th additional three drop, um, so on and so forth. Uh, power cord synchronize obviously is here just to get you an extra copy of an important piece to the puzzle. Dreamboat obviously is just here to trigger overheals. It's not really there for the stats that it's going to gain, but more just to trigger the overheals that you have. Um, obviously, Hadanus seems really good. Uh, I wanted to kind of play a card like Switcheroo in here until you start realizing you can't really switch with anything that has four or less health with Hadanus, or else he's just going to kill himself whenever he comes into play. So Switcheroo, can't even, that's a no-go for this deck. Uh, 
but you have like Famish Fool to kind of reload here too. You have uh, Clergy to uh, get you some more overheal. Shadow Ascendant can hopefully stick you aboard early on in the game. And you have uh, Crimson Clergy who got uh, essentially re reworked to uh, try to net you some cards early on in the game. I also put Dredger Staff in here just to, to kind of max out the butts on these minions as well. Moving on here, uh, this is a class I wanted to talk about, which is uh, Rogue. Rogue's one of those classes that it's probably worse than Paladin, that I think most of the new cards that they got are just not as good as the ones that they already have. They're not losing a lot from Miracle Rogue. I think they're losing like two cards, which is like four cards total uh, from Miracle Rogue and maybe five cards total. And those are just easily replaceable. Um, so the deck here, I would probably still play Miracle Rogue. Let's just put it that way. Uh, but the deck here only has one new card in it, which is Harmonic Hip Hop. But it, it's Miracle Rogue has gained so much. It gains Cycle still, has Cycle still in like Vanna Knives. And uh, just like stuff like that. And it also has like Breakdance for the uh, Stenographer which is really good with the Stenographer. It gets you an additional 4-4 with Rush. Uh, I just can't see Rogue moving away from that. So if you want to play Miracle Rogue, I would continue playing Miracle Rogue. This deck was just here because uh, Pirate Rogue hasn't really had its chance to really flourish. It was okay in the beginning of Voyage of the Sunken City, but not great. And I think this deck has a, a little bit of a chance to shine with cards like Jolly Roger in it which has not seen a lot of uh, standard play. It also got Dread Corsair back as well, which cannot be overlooked either. <clears throat> Next up here on the list is Shaman, and Man Shaman got retold quite a bit. Uh, I think it's going to work out, though. I think Shaman's going to be like a good Tier 2 class. I don't think uh, any of its decks are going to quite be at Tier 1, but I think it's going to be better than it was the last expansion. Yes, it had a Tier 1 deck in Evolve Shaman for a week and a half, and uh, then got nerfed pretty much into Oblivion. Um, but I think this deck's going to work out in the end. I think it's got two decks. I think Totem Shaman has some, some possibility to it. I'm not as confident in Totem Shaman as I am in, like, Overload Shaman. Uh, Overload Shaman can kind of combo off a little bit here with Jive Insect and Criminal Lineup. I uh, put Alakar, Alakir in here to kind of just solidify as an extra, like, combo piece. Or even if you can just finish them off, get them within striking distance, and then finish them off with it. Uh, pack the House seemed better than advertised. And uh, Altered Core, Cord, and stuff like that. Uh, Feral Spirits getting reworked. Ancestral Knowledge getting reworked. All these cards just add up. Not to mention here, I, like, I just have Vicious Solar Spear in here as an early drop because it can sneak in so much damage, I think, in this deck. Uh, that's not to mention either that we have Flow Rider in here, which can actually go fetch out a spell if need be. Uh, we also have Instrument Tech to go get our Jazz Bass. Instrument Tech is going to be so good in so many decks. Uh, probably the best neutral card in the expansion. Uh, if I had to speculate on one, that's going to be my pick for neutral minion of the expansion. Is going to be Instrument Tech. Moving on here, we have Warlock. Another class that I wanted to talk about because... You could go and play Imp Warlock. Imp Warlock's not losing a lot. They have some interchangeable pieces. But for the most part, the key pieces are going to be still be there. Uh, it's still going to be a, a solid deck, I think. And if you want to go play that, you can definitely play Imp Warlock. Uh, this deck is still that kind of like a mix of the undead variety that was uh, not quite Tier 1, you know, but it was close to it, so it's kind of like a meld of the two. Uh, now that you have some early game and some mid game to bridge the gap to the late game, I think this deck actually is a little bit better. Not to mention that you have Defile. Defile is such a powerful card for decks like this to kind of just bridge that gap 
to the mid the late game and I think it's going to be such an important piece of the puzzle. Uh, so I wanted to highlight this deck rather than Imp Warlock, because Imp Warlock is sort of builds itself. Uh, so this one, obviously with the Fatigue Package and stuff like that, I'm very excited to play the Fatigue Package. Seems like it's going to be overall be a, a pretty cool uh, mechanic for the expansion. Hopefully they build on to this down the line here maybe not the next expansion but uh maybe in like the final mini set of the year add something to a little bit of something to it and call it a day here on that and then lastly here menagerie warrior uh this is pretty much kibler's list from the theory crafting he went six and oh during theory crafting yeah, he faced some like really slow decks and stuff like that. But I don't think this is that bad. I think he's kind of on to something with uh, going like more the mech route than uh, any other type of minion here. And like cards like Click Clocker or Mech Beast and stuff like that. So they have numerous types on them. Uh, so. That's very, very good whenever it comes to cards like Power Slider and Roaring Applause. Roaring Applause, you really only need to draw like three cards. So a minion, one minion with two types and like, uh, yeah, Gorilla Bot A3 has multiple types. Um, obviously here, and a card like Frequency Oscillator is so good. Party Animal gives you a little bit of buffs. Uh... Drum Solo List pretty much is just here to gain the board back and to be a dragon for Amber Whelp. Um, it is solely there as like a last resort uh, way to fight for the board back, pretty much. Uh, Hook Fist 3000 is also a mech pirate, so it's multiple types. Um, it's also a mech, so if you have a Gorilla Bot, you can use Gorilla Bot. Um, and Woodcutter's Axe seem to overperform now that it just gives plus two plus one to any minion not just a minion with rush so that's something to keep on in mind as well it fights early for the board it needs to obviously stick the board uh as well but it does seem better than advertised and i don't think the list is fledged out but i do think this is a good starting point for Warrior. I don't think the Control Warrior variants are very good. I don't think the Rifts are very good. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to sit here and uh, piss in the wind, essentially. The Rifts absolutely suck, 100%. I'm not going to defend them on that. But I don't think Warrior is the worst class this expansion. I think that kind of goes to Druid. I have a bad feeling about Druid for this expansion, and while that's sad, it's had it quite a long time in the sun with Guff, so I'm not so sad for it right now, and uh, just excited for the new expansion and a new meta here, so that's going to be it for the theory crafting videos. All the codes are going to be down below for these decks. Enjoy day one. Have fun. Only craft what you want to craft here. Definitely here. It's day one of the expansion. No one's going to know really what to react to quite yet. Decks aren't going to be fledged out. Just have fun, especially for like the first 24 hours and stuff. And then, you know, start trying out new things here and stuff like that. Enjoy yourselves. Have a nice day. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.